Hello, and welcome to the podcast. Today we will be discussing endurance dancing and how to avoid perspiration while doing so. Oh yeah, and we will also be discussing the films in the movie Kino Theater, which of course roughly translates to movie, movie, theater, theater. Hmm, that is overflusing, yeah? A big clapper! Hello, welcome to the sixth episode of the podcast, Bonus Features, with Alex and Robert. I'm Alex. And I'm Robert. So, did you catch the championship game? Uh, I caught the first two-thirds, and I was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah, it's a shame. I I thought, well, I thought Michigan was going to get stomped. Yeah. And they did. They did. But. They left a little bit to uh, surprise for the first half. The first half was promising. Yes. And then, in typical fashion, the second half was not Thus was the story of Villanova. Yeah. They, they were clearly the best team. They destroyed everyone. Yeah. All right, so moving on to uh, non-sports related stuff. We're going to talk about some movies and shit. All right. First up, we mentioned this last time, the Terminal trailer came out. Yes. It came out literally about a day after. <laughs> Pretty much like within we, hours. After we recorded, it was up. Yeah. And my reaction from what sounded great on paper uh, has changed. I'm I'm not really sure how this is gonna go. I can't really tell if it's trying to be serious or comedic or what it what its deal is. Yeah, I can't really place it either in a in a bad way. Like it it looks like they're trying to go for uh, John Wicky Guy Ritchie. I don't know. Like it's if there's anything I will say, it's like the world looks interesting. Like the like literally the world. Like the cinematography looks cool. Like there's the one shot that's like an exterior of like neon lights and like reminded me of like the shots of like the narrows from like Batman Begins. I'm like, that looks kinda neat, but like I'm not gonna see a movie because of just that. Like you gotta sell me on the story too, which I don't know what this movie is really about. It's kind of about too much, it seems. See, that's kind of what I was thinking. I thought, okay, there's two assassins, but Margot Robbie is also clearly uh like shapeshifter mastermind yeah who knows she's also an assassin and i don't know and then mike myers is just kind of there <laughs> and he has a british accent this time around of course but not not the british accent we all know and love no from austin powers no like a regular one sort of yeah but yeah i thought this looks sort of like a noir mm-hmm. but i kind of thought Noir's had its day. I don't. Yeah. I don't. The only way to do a, a noir really as a modern one is you borrow elements from the old ones, but you know, distance yourself from the the specific tropes that are really easy to spot. Yeah, I feel like noirs nowadays are. It reminds me a lot of like the western because the western and the noir right. are both very dated genres. Um, so I feel like with movies like Thoroughbreds we talked about or like Hell or High Water. It's like you have to update them right, to make them more modern, where they still have like the core thematic elements of what their respective genres are, but they're also just new and they're just more modern. Exactly, and I can't... This seems sort of stuck in the old, but it's in the future. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not sure what to make of it. That's what I'm saying. This just I haven't seen a trailer this weird in a while, because normally when I see uh, a trailer, I can at least tell if I think it'll be good or not this i have no idea Mm because i thought this could either be terrible or amazing i just (laughs) yeah i don't know how to put it uh yeah and i mean it it at least looks like margot robbie's having some fun so that's good that's true i'd like to see her in more things that look good yeah i mean i think she's good just suicide squad was not great Mm. neither was tarzan oh yeah focus was just okay yeah. Everyone says I should see Tanya, but oh, I, I just don't know if I'm interested in seeing a movie about that at all. I think you might. I think I think it's worth a look. You seen it? Oh yeah. It was good. I was a big fan. It's it's twisted in a good way. Her acting just seemed like weird in the trailer. Just yeah. Seemed very not believable. She she pulls it off, but it's it's the Alice and Janney show. You come there to see her wreck shop, and she's pretty goddamn. I mean, she won an Oscar, man. Yeah, all right. It's maybe. worthy of a look. But hopefully this will be too. I don't know. But Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. So up next, uh, we got more news on the Three from Hell sequel from Rob Zombie. This is not a joke, everyone. Danny Trejo and Clint Howard. 
That's right. Ron Howard's brother mm-hmm. have both been added to this. To, uh, I guess you could call them kind of that guys. Maybe not Danny Trejo, but Danny Trejo was at one point of that guy. He was definitely that guy. Clint but Howard still is. He's still a that guy for sure. He's not a that guy for me because when I he's <laughs> he's got a pretty unmistakable face. He's not a Dylan Baker that guy because yeah, that yeah. that's a whole different level of that guy. He's the lizard man. Yeah. From uh, Spider Man, remember? No, see, when I say Dylan Baker, I barely remember what he's in. <laughs> I, I, I just think of his face. Right. But uh, but you're right. Now that I think about it, that guy. Yeah, he was Dr. Kurt Connors. He was That guy was Kurt Connors. Peter's, <laughs> Peter's professor. But uh, yeah, uh, this Devil's Reject sequel's cast is, is uh, thickening up. It's getting huge. Yeah, yeah. And it's got a lot of uh, former collaborators with Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. There's another guy from 31 that just got added. Right. And I think Clint Howard, uh, he was in that Super Beasto thing. Okay. And I know Danny Trejo has done a couple things with him. Oh, he was also in the Halloween remake. The first one, the one I liked. Right, right. He was uh, the orderly. Really? He was like the friendly orderly at the (laughs) mental hospital. It's like, you'll get out of here someday, Mikey. It's okay. Interesting. And then he kills him. Okay. (laughs) It's, It's just so sad. Cause Interesting. Because he, he's just like, Mikey, come on! I thought we were buds! Jesus. And then he just kind of looks at him like, don't you know I'm crazy, man? <laughs> and kills him. But yeah, I, I'm really excited to see this now that I know all the, the new details about the cast. Mm-hmm. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's definitely seeming like it. Uh, Clint Howard is, uh, is, I guess he's playing a clown in the movie? Is he? Yeah, they had some... How has he not played a clown? He's, he's had to have... Probably I, in a Rob Zombie movie. Oh, it's it it probably has happened. I don't know, but he definitely is playing a clown in this. It seems because someone I think they released like a logo or a uh, T-shirt or something that looks like uh, him as a clown on it, okay. like uh, in digital form. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is yeah, but this is shaping up to be something to look out for. Yeah, I, w- I was already on board, but the casting has only helped me gain more interest. Same. Next up, we've got uh, production has started on Creed 2. Yes, it sure has. Starring Michael B. Jordan. Starring Michael B. Jordan, of course. Uh, Sly is going to be in this as well. Of course, uh, Tessa Thompson will be returning. Dolph Lundgren will be reprising his role as Ivan Drago. Um, and Florian Montono, I think is how you pronounce it, is playing Vitor Drago. Okay. Um, so... I mean, the plot for this thing pretty much writes itself. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be the Drago Creed rematch. You know, it's going to be Donnie Creed versus Vitor Drago. So he's avenging his father's death against a guy who didn't kill him. Yes. Makes makes perfect sense. But they do have Dolph Lundgren in it. So he's probably going to be there to, 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 you know, be weird. (laughs) I don't know. The sound's not good. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. If it's written, I mean, Sly wrote it. Okay. So I mean, it's it's not as though we're having a you know somebody take a crack at Rocky who's never done Simon it before. Kinberg. Yeah, no, it's yeah. not like a you know some person's like it's not a, f- a fresh take. No, it's nothing yeah, like yeah. that. It's like Sly's writing it. Um, I'm I'm not worried about the director. It's just that I'm not I have no frame of reference for who he is. His name is Stephen Capel Jr. Uh, he, he directed a movie called The Land, which is kind of like, okay. like a Cleveland gangland drama, I think it was. Okay. Um, but this, I mean, if it's anything, if it's half as good as Creed 1, I'm, I'll enjoy it. You know, I'll be fine with it. Um, I didn't end up seeing Creed 1, actually, because I just, again, I'm mm-hmm. weary about sequels to things that haven't been done in a while. Yeah. So I just didn't bother with Creed, but everyone said it was good. I mean, so perhaps I should check it out. I thought it was, it was quite good. I, I, you know, there were people who were hailing it as like this is the best boxing movie ever made and best Rocky well, but, movie. And but I'm that's like, all, I, that's all modern hyperbole. Bullshit. Yeah, and I, I didn't, I didn't buy into any, any of that. I, I just, I thought it was a very well made movie. It was, you know, good performances. It's good to see the characters back, um, and I, just, I liked it a lot. And if this movie follows in those movie in in that movie's footsteps, then I will be. Uh, I'll be more than glad. Okay. So when is this coming out or scheduled to? 
It's still slated to come out this year, November 23rd of this year, in fact. That's possible, though. Yeah, I think you can shoot a movie like this in a couple months. Maybe oh. maybe less than two. Okay. You know, because there's nothing, you know, this isn't uh, uh, Avengers Infinity War, you know, where it's like, this is an event. Um, it's shot in three different countries and yeah, all that. Yeah, and all these different formats, yeah. IMAX, and it's it's not. It's, it's a smaller movie. Uh, I feel like they could get it done. Okay. All right, moving on. Zachary Kinto. Is that how you say it? Kinto? Yes. Zach Kinto of the Star Trek series says that there's actually multiple scripts in the works right now. Mm -hmm. There's one with, uh, of course, what we've been hearing, Quentin Tarantino. Yes. There's another by Simon Pegg and his writing partner, whoever that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, And then there's a third one. Did they say who the third one was by? I can't remember. It's just... Other screenwriters, but this this really doesn't surprise me too much, and I feel like this is just the way it works now, sort of. Yeah. Because there is at one point six scripts for Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. And they just <laughs> they just kind of rolled the dice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm. It's it's interesting um, because there are three very viable. Um, well, at least two. I think the third one. We haven't necessarily determined who they are yet, or I don't think it's been revealed. Um, no, I thought they said who they were. Well, we definitely know it's Simon Pegg and Doug Jung for the first one. Yeah, and then Tarantino is writing the second one. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't know that Tar- this Tarantino Star Trek idea was going to include the cast of the current Star Trek. I thought it was going to be an offshoot thing, inc- like including a different Kirk and a different Spock. I don't understand how that would have worked. I I had well because I mean well, I figured it had to be for this current series. Yeah, I I I don't know why I just didn't put didn't put two and two together. I thought it was just going to be its own thing, and we were just going to leave Star Trek the the previous like uh, Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto stuff off. Oh, you know. so you thought maybe they're going to do a Amazing Spider Man type deal? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. But I I mean if this is if this is a Star Trek four pitch with chris pine and zachary quinto and we're keeping this thing going hell yeah because i i mean those movies are pretty damn good all I, of them i really like the third one yeah i think a lot of the people that saw it really liked it well and that's 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 the advocate i would that is a the third one is an advocate for the simon peck doug is right doug jung or doug young either way but or, they wrote that one yeah and the problem with that one was it was hardly marketed at all yeah i mean i saw it because you know the, look at us like this is we're always keeping track of this shit, but you know, it didn't get, they didn't really spread the word like they should have, which right. is really a shame because I really don't think I heard of many people disliking it. And again, I think the whole series has been good. Mm-hmm. And I even like two, but that's because I don't really give a rat's ass about the original Star Trek. Yeah. So maybe I'd be annoyed by the con thing, but it didn't bug me in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I two is my favorite one. Yeah, <laughs> I know that that that'll piss off a lot of Star Trek fans, just because it's so closely tied to Wrath of Khan, um, which is a movie I've yet to see. This, yeah, you know what I've. Yeah, that's the thing is I have no attachment to any of the original Star Trek stuff, which I know is blasphemous, but I just I I didn't grow up a Star Trek person. No, neither did I. I mean, I didn't I, grow up a Star Wars person either, really. I mean, I grew up with the prequels, but that was I was already, what, 10 years old when that was going on. Yeah, I mean, well, I would say I definitely grew up Star Wars because mm-hmm. I have seen the original trilogy. Of course, I mean, episodes four through six, when I say original trilogy, seen those all at least a dozen times each, probably more. Because mm-hmm. like, that used to be the thing I'd put on, you know. Yeah. When I would have, when I was like five, six, and I, a babysitter would be watching, it's like, that's the movie that'd be put in. I actually have the quote from Zachary Quinto yeah. um, about these scripts. So he says, first of all, I think there's a couple of scripts because there was a script being written before Quentin Tarantino came up with his idea for a potential film. And so I think they're kind of developing more than one. So I don't know what is going to happen. Quentin is off doing another movie, so I feel like we are in a state of anticipation. All of us are really excited about the idea of working with Quentin on a Star Trek film, but I know Simon Pegg and Doug Young, who wrote the last film, are writing a script, and there are another set of writers writing a script. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, This also mentions that Tarantino actually met uh, with a writer's room, including Mark L. Smith, 
uh, who wrote The Revenant, Lindsay Beer, who is currently writing Godzilla vs. King Kong. Isn't she also writing everything? Yeah, she's another one of those. Her like, and the other girl with the three names that I always get wrong. Geneva Robertson Dvorak. Robertson Dvorak, that's yes. it. And then uh, Drew Pierce was also in there, who I think he... Did he co-write Iron Man 3 with Shane Black? Uh, or did that's, he write it Yeah, all? I think so. And didn't yeah. he also... No, I'm thinking... Never mind, I was thinking of Drew Goddard. I thought he wrote Kevin the Woods, but oh, he did not. Yes, different Drew. Different Drew. Um, so there's. it definitely sounds like there's movement on this, and it's, it's from a lot of different fronts, yeah. which, I mean, there's a lot of Star Trek stories out there, you know? Yeah. A lot of them that the I think old, are ripe for film yeah. adaptations. The only one I was going to say that I do sort of have some affinity for was the one with Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah. Because I watched that, like, occasionally when I was, like, a real little kid. Yeah, it was it Next Generation? Yeah, I, I don't think I understood it at all. No? It, it, was, it was just on. You're a Picard guy? It was just, yeah, it was just on okay. UPN or whatever. That's what I was saying, is, like, maybe we'll get a, do you think eventually down the line in these Star Trek movies we'll see Picard come in? Because that happens in the actual original uh, continuity, right, of films, like, Kirk dies and then like he passes like the baton to Picard like in some other dimension or some shit. See, but that's the thing is I don't know anything about like canons or timelines. Right. I, I barely can keep that shit straight for things I I follow. Right, right, right. You know, what with like DC rebooting every seven months. Yeah, and all the Earths and shit. No, but this time it's like the Earth is changing. Yeah. Is it a reboot? No, it's something else. <laughs> Okay, fine, it's a reboot. Yeah. I wish they would just... Yeah, but anyway, back to the Star Trek. Like, They're they're pretty damn known for, for doing a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy shit that can happen because it's Star Trek and why not? Who knows? I, I would be fine with Picard, I guess. I don't know. Who would you fan cast as, as Picard? Oh, we gotta get a new one? I don't like that. Oh, you wanna do Patrick Stewart? I don't know. I just don't see anyone else fit in the role. I, 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 do, I do get that. Maybe they could, they could do the well because like how all about, these movies about, yeah. take place in the same plane because they had like they had like Leonard Nimoy Spock in the original Star oh, Trek right yeah, and they had Zachary right. Quinto Spock. I um, don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think one of these scripts will probably be fine. I'm hoping that it's the Simon Pegg one. Yeah, I really. That's what I'm hoping. I trust their vision. You know that Star Trek Beyond script was really solid, really tight script. Uh, Good story, fun action. I liked it a lot, and I hope they. And I like the Jayla character. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's so many characters that I'm just like, I'd like to see come back. You know, I'm hoping she's back. But what's her name? So Sophia Butella. Yeah, yeah, she was great. But there'll be no Scotty this time. Oh, that's right. Yeah, or you'll Man. have to recast him, which I don't know. How I'd feel about that. I mean, it. They, I mean, could, they could find a way to I send I think they off. could find a way to either send him off or recast him. It's, of course, that's just a shame mm-hmm. in any scenario. But yeah. So three scripts. That's about half as many as the average blockbuster has, apparently. Yeah. So moving along, Apple is looking to get into the original content game. And they're thinking about buying A24, or so the rumor says. Right. But then it turns out that the meetings that A24 has been having with Apple were just about partnerships. Mm-hmm. And I think that their uh, podca- A24's podcast is sponsored by Apple or something along those lines. Right. So, I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts on Apple trying to get into this original content game? Because it's gone so well for Amazon. Yeah. And it took a while, but it I was being sarcastic there, but it has worked out sort of for netflix at least for their series well i mean a lot of these is it's like we still don't really know because i know netflix is really weirdly confidential about their numbers and like how successful they're doing i know we know like how much they're spending but like the viewership numbers and like the uh uh profit numbers are very uh they're just kind of scant you know like they'll come out every now and then and like trickles and we'll get like little tidbits but the data is just kind of very it's very scant right now so i don't know um but this doesn't surprise me we see a lot of like big companies like these starting to do that now you know you had yahoo try and do it uh yeah Amazon, try and do it and then youtube, YouTube. Red. what a smashing success that's been yeesh i mean we talked about cobra kai yeah 
You know what? I gotta bring that up again. Cobra Kai, <laughs> like, I saw the the new trailer mm. where it's like, get ready for the next tournament. And yeah. I'm like, what is this, a 1997 Disney Channel movie promo? Yeah. It honestly looks like a fan video. Yeah. Like, it looks, it's, it's so bad, it's almost insulting. Mm-hmm. It's just sort of like, oh, here's, look, it's Johnny and Cobra Kai. Do you remember those things? <laughs> yeah, it's it's ca- it's definitely cashing in on on a, on a fandom and on something on a property that some people will will recognize, which is a, another growing trend in Hollywood. But th- this is really an inexcusable one it, mm-hmm. because the lack of effort it, to me this is worse than any other reboot. Mm-hmm. For instance, like the Jumanji one, which obviously box office disagrees with me. Yeah, but at least they they tried. Yeah. You know, they got an actual film crew and made a legitimate movie. Mm-hmm. This is bullshit. Yeah, man. I don't know. But going back to Apple, yeah, we've seen a lot of media, I guess, titans enter into the content-making game. Netflix, Yahoo, Amazon, YouTube. I'm not a um, fan of it. I've yet to see anything there that's, that's really... Then again, I don't really watch a lot of them just because I'm not a big TV guy. And a lot of these um, content developers are doing TV. Well, there you go. They haven't won your viewership over anything yeah. else. Yes, and in terms of movies, Amazon's got a couple that they're making into theaters. You know, like they yeah. had like Manchester by the Sea and stuff. But um, that was Amazon for real. I think they co-distributed it. I think because that they produced it. Yeah, that was I think the same thing with Gringo, but Gringo kind of sucked. Yeah, that's that was the point I, I was going to make. Is like I I have yet to see one of these films not made by a major studio. To really blow me away. Netflix has been making most of them, and kind of all of them have been not great. No. <laughs> like, uh, what was the bright Did, was, I haven't, I, I wanted to see it, but I heard it was really bad. You see Message from the King? Oh, that wasn't it supposed to come out? Oh, no, I'm thinking of Hologram for the King. Message from the King, I heard, was not good. No, it was not good. It was weird. And, I mean, Chadwick Boseman was fine in it. Alfred right. Molina was fine in it. It's just like a lot of these Netflix things. The acting's fine, the lighting and all that shit's fine, it's just the script sucks. Which is weird, because they're, they're so, well, I, I don't know, they're so good at, you know, finding stories for TV, you'd think they'd be good at doing it for movies. I guess not. Apparently yeah. not. But I don't know how I feel about this Apple thing, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Like, big studios seem to be doing fine at it, but that's because that's what they do. And that's what they have been doing. Right. Forever. And I feel like a lot of these other, you know, tech companies are just trying to edge in. Mm-hmm. Like, why don't we try this? Right. I, I don't. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But for the time being, I'm hoping this doesn't get too far. I think. I think they're gonna try, and I think it, what'll happen is they'll end up like Amazon, or not Amazon, like Yahoo, mm-hmm. where it's just gonna be super small shows, and I, I just don't see this gaining much steam. Yeah, me neither. But you never know. All it takes is one real big series, mm-hmm. like a was it House of Cards? That's Netflix. Yeah, House of Cards, Orange the New Black. Yeah, that see, I was gonna say that might even be the bigger one mm-hmm. of the two. And also, we can't forget Stranger Things. Yeah, that's the big. Uh, currently, that's the biggest thing I think that they've got on Netflix. Yeah, but I mean, that's like a huge show that gets talked about as much as anything else. Yeah, if not more. Yeah, definitely. So it's not impossible for Apple to break through. I just think it'll be, it'll be tough for them. Mm-hmm. But you know they can just throw cash at things because they got plenty of that. Right. So we'll see. Moving along. Oh yes, this is my favorite piece of news so far. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I I want this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Red Sonia adaptation is in the works, with uh, scribe Ashley Edward Miller writing. I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. Yes, same here. Uh, especially with uh, previous iterations of this property. You know that Arnold Schwarzenegger apparently said about the original Red Sonja, he said something along the lines of, it was so bad, I think it was the worst movie I've worked on. Whenever my kids were bad, I would put on the movie for them as punishment. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he said. That's pretty great. Yeah. Um, which is hilarious because he also made Hercules in New York. And I'm mm. kind of thinking, really? Is Red Sonja the worst movie you've made? <laughs> is it? 
Yeah, there's some other pretty bad ones. Maybe Redstone just is that bad, and I don't know. Yeah. Um, but this definitely, uh, this was something that they've been kind of trying to do for a, a while, right? Red Sony, they've been trying to do a remake of it for a couple years. If it hasn't been public, I'm sure this has just been one of those things, like Zorro or, yeah, or yeah. Three Musketeers or Tarzan. It's just one of those things that, no matter what, it's always going to be in development, even if they just made one. Right, right. And I, I'm i interested with this choice of writer, because he's got some some cred. Uh, he wrote X-Men First Class and Thor. But both of those were with Zack Stentz, right? It sure was. Those both were with him, a former his former writing partner. I don't know if they're broken up or anything like that, but I think they're, I don't know, they're going off to they're do their just, own they're, things, it they're seems on like. A, they're on a trial separation. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Because um, <laughs> I know Zack Stentz, I think, is attached to the Booster Gold movie. Uh, probably. Yeah. All, all these guys are attached to something so at many, D- DC yeah. or Marvel, but basically. at this juncture, I like the writer. Um, I am interested in the property. I think this has the potential to be either either a, a, an enjoyable film or a so bad it's good film, which both of which I'll, I'll be in, interested in. Again, I'm see that's kind of the weird thing is I'm almost rooting for a so so bad it's good. Yeah. More than a good movie. Okay. Well, it was like I don't know if I told you about when I saw the Dread. Oh what yeah. Was the new one called Just, Dread? Yeah. Yeah, Dread. I wanted it to be a terrible movie, and I was almost disappointed that it was an actually good action movie. Right. <laughs> I wanted it to be, you know, a campy piece of crap that I could laugh at. Right, right. But sometimes you get a good movie, and you walk out of the theater disappointed. Yeah, man. But yeah, I would rather this be bad. Yeah. Because it's like, it's similar, it's basically, if I'm not mistaken, because I don't, I've never read her comics, but I'm pretty sure she's just a female Conan essentially essentially yeah so i think this will probably be in a lot of ways similar to wonder woman and yeah i i think unfortunately the comparison's going to be unavoidable yeah i think that's definitely true especially for now wait wait a second well i don't there's no there's no release date for this there's no director attached but um yeah this is just announced that he's working on the script that's yeah. all we got so far yeah i was gonna say maybe if that fell in line with the wonder woman release year that would be even more like unavoidable the comparisons that is but we don't know yet uh it doesn't seem like it would be released yeah because it's like 19 maybe one maybe wonder woman 3 mm, who knows yeah hasn't this also been in some sort of development hell for a while at least well yeah that's uh yeah i think it definitely has like like we said earlier it's like this has just been something that I it's been having trouble being made for a while. And I think the original one might have something to do with it. Probably. And also recent the recent Conan adaptation. Probably But if Hollywood has taught us anything, do something once and it's successful, do it fifty times. Yeah. Hollywood, Wonder Woman was very successful. Let's get on that those uh fifty other iterations. Right. So Closing out the news segment, we have some late-to-the-party news. It seems as though Charlie's Angels is going to be getting a reboot, and Elizabeth Banks is attached to direct. Um, We also have a screenwriter in mind, uh, playwright David Auburn, who wrote... uh, I think he worked on the screenplay for Proof, and I think he actually wrote fully the screenplay for The Lake House. Yeah, that's right. Um, My first instinct of this is... I like Elizabeth Banks a lot. I think she right. was originally slated to direct Pitch Perfect 3, but I think there was some conflict there, and she eventually dropped out. Um, but she's got comedic chops, for sure. Um, I think she's capable of it. This screenwriter, though, I'm like, why? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Because when I think of playwrights writing movies with any sort of action in them, mm-hmm. although I mentioned this, I'll mention it again. Hercules in New York. Yeah. Not that this is going to be anywhere near that in terms of awful quality, but it just, I don't know, it makes me wonder how they choose writers sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I'm on board with Elizabeth Banks as a director. Yeah, same here. I mean, who knows? Maybe this guy had a great pitch for a Charlie's Angel reboot. She's pretty consistent. I like I, I like her work. I think she, she yeah, especially as an actress. I mean, she's, yeah. she's, I don't know, I'm trying to think if she's... She hasn't really done a whole lot of directing, I think. But I know she's I, she's co-written yeah. some stuff, for sure. Well, she's going to be in that movie. Oh, man. 
I've been waiting to hear more about it, but she's starring in that movie Happy Time Murders. Oh, yeah, that's right. The one with the puppets and stuff. Yeah. It's a, is it Jim Henson's kid is directing that? I think, I think so. I, I don't know. I just remember seeing concept art for it, and it was like, it was. Did you see it? Yeah, it was like, like the, the the Muppet just standing over the the dead body sheet. Yeah, when there was like, there's like stuffing everywhere. <laughs> it's just like there's like police like do not cross. Yeah, it's just ah, uh, it looks it looks fun, but yeah. um, yeah, that's I, what I'm saying is I think she chooses to be part of. Oh yeah, she at, chooses at least, her projects well. I'd she, say. She chooses things that where if I don't really love them personally, I think they certainly have their fan bases, such as Pitch Perfect and uh, Hunger Games and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 40-Year-Old Virgin. And you know what? I think she hammed it up perfectly as Rita Repulsa. Yeah, she definitely hammed it up, that's for sure. That's the problem, though, is like no one was on her level. Yeah. She she was just sitting there, get on my level, guys. I'm going crazy. And everyone's like... No, we're gonna try this grounded thing, and it's like fuck that. Be crazy. Yeah. No, no one met. No one met her. No one met her halfway. It was disappointing in that sense. Yeah, I'm interested is, to see how her is she supposed to be in this, like as a side character or no? I don't know actually, because I, I know she was obviously a side character in Pitch Perfect, mm. and she was attached to direct the third. Right. Um, so it could be. Who knows? She could probably end up casting herself. Well, who do we have casted so far? Or, is, or what? at least what is the rumor mill saying? Well, the rumor mill is saying that uh, Lupita Nyong'o and Kristen Stewart are attached right now. But that is obviously super subject to change. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't know if I... I definitely don't place Kristen Stewart as an, like an action comedy type. Then mm. again, she was an American Ultra, which you saw. Actually, yeah. She was fine in that. Okay, so maybe I'm... I, who knows? This could work. Mm, I just it could work. I look at this and it's like the the original Charlie. She Angels. just doesn't seem like a like a super, uh, I guess, fun movie actress. Yeah, I, but Peter Nyong'o would be fine because she was in Black Panther. Yeah, I feel like she's multi talented. Um, right, but with the original Charlie's Angels, I feel like that cast is like you kind of know what they're going for. Like right. you get. Like Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu. It's like, okay, so mostly funny with some action. That's what I'm wondering. It's like, what is this? I hope this playwright guy knows what he's writing. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's like going to be an interesting a, the thing. The last thing I want to fucking hear is on some uh, interview. It's really a more mature version of Charlie's Angels. It's oh, a man. character piece, really. Like, oh, like man. that's the kind of bullshit. It's like, all right, I know you want to like make it your own because... Mm-hmm. You know, you're rebooting it, but at the same time, it's like don't don't act like this is something it isn't. I want him to find a nice middle ground between like, like the the two ends of the spectrum are like I don't want this to be the remake of Point Break, where yeah. it's like super droll and bad, and I don't want this to be Baywatch like with The Rock, where it's like yeah. they're like overly self aware and they're like let's just make you know what let's just make this movie bad, it's and like, I'm like wink, no don't wink. do that. <laughs> Wink, wink, look in the camera. Yeah. Did you guys watch the old show? Ha ha, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Hey, here's David Hasselhoff. You know who he is, kids? Yeah. Your parents do. And it's just like, I hope, oh God, I hope I don't, they don't do this. I hope they don't do that. I feel like they, they should just start having wiki articles just appear on the screen. It's like, oh, oh my God, it's David Hasselhoff. It's like, wing. They just pause and then <laughs> yeah. they just like let a, a, put a wiki article on screen. Dun 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 They just give people time to read it. Oh, oh now I okay. get it. <laughs> entire audience. Oh. Oh man. Yeah. I just I'd like to see a balance here, but um, yeah. I don't know. I'm well. I, I'm kind of on a question mark like place. You know, I'm like I got some questions. The, the last time they tried to do any uh, iteration of any sort was that. There was a TV show, right? Yes. Wasn't it on NBC, maybe? Oh, God, I'm not sure. NBC, ABC, whatever. It was one of the networks, mm-hmm. and it lasted, what, a season? Maybe? The original? No, the, the second oh, the show. Re- oh, God, oh, man. So the third iteration. Oh, Jesus. So this will I be think the it was f- NBC. Yeah, so this will be the fourth iteration. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know what Hollywood also says sometimes? Hmm. If it doesn't work, try it 50 times? Yes. Well, they, they say three things. 
and it's kind of weird how they pick and choose. It didn't work once, so never try it again for 50 years. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. And then there's, it didn't work once, so try it again 50 times and think you'll get it right. And then, of course, the most common is obviously what we'd mentioned before. It worked once, so do 50 of them. Yeah. So maybe they'll maybe they'll get it right on this fourth try. Here's hoping. Yeah. All right, now we're going to discuss the month of May and what's coming out during that month. First up, we've got some stuff. We've got Bad Samaritan. Yes. This is a movie directed by a gentleman by the name of uh, Dean Devlin, who you may not know, but you may know the last movie he made called Geostorm. Oh, God. (laughs) For real? Yes, it is the previous film. But the trailer, though, for this thing, what did you think? I think that the premise looks promising. I'm not sure how to take this recent news that you've made me aware of. (laughs) Yes, I also Uh, looked this up and was kind of, I don't know. Yeah, okay, but what I like about this premise is it's sort of one of those situations where the person, or the the protagonist is is sort of not a protagonist, they're doing something shitty, Mm -hmm. but then they have to all of a sudden make a sort of moral dilemma choice Yeah, where do I get... Do I get caught in order to stop this other horrible thing from happening, or do I just stop what I'm doing altogether, not get caught, and not deal with this at all? Because, of course, the plot is that this kid and his friend are working valet, Mm -hmm. and they decide that they're going to rob this guy's house while they're parking his car or something. Is that it? Yeah. And then what happens is he discovers there's a woman being kept there. Yeah, and I the the thing I liked about it is actually something you brought up about thrillers in the review that we did for Unsane, which is most thrillers, the best ones operate under the premise of like, wouldn't this be sh- a shitty thing to go through? Like, wouldn't this be a bad scenario? And I think that this trailer, at least the second half of it, really sold me on that premise. I was a little worried about the first half because it's just like, at least the trailer I saw was like the main character, like seeing all the shitty things, he's like the crimes he's doing and things he's stealing. And I'm like, okay, is this just like going to be like train, like a bad train spotting ripoff? <laughs> but then we get into what the movie's actually about, which is uh, he steals David Tennant's car and goes to his house and then obviously... Finds out that there's a woman who's being, or who has been kidnapped and is being kept there. Right. And another thing that I like is, I like, you know what? I like seeing David Tennant as the bad guy. Okay. He's a good bad guy. He was, of course, Purple Man, one of the stronger elements of the Jessica Jones show. And uh, obviously he's, you know, mostly known for his role on the Doctor Who television series. But uh, I like seeing him more villainous. And I think he, he plays a real creep well yeah he does it and it looks like he's sort of uh got them sort of caught in a game scenario because he realizes that the the spot they're in yeah yeah i like i like it yeah all right so then after that we've got batman ninja which technically is being released on april 24th on the internet but may 8th on the dvds yes and technically and the blu-rays and technically we have kind of already discussed it we've already discussed the awesomeness that is the batman ninja trailer and all the glory of sumo bane and oh yeah uh said other characters shogun joker and all that mess so i don't know if there's not much else to say i'm looking forward to that so am i I'm thinking I'll wait for the the DVD. Yeah, probably same here, I'm thinking. Okay, and then after that, we've got Breaking In yeah. on May 11th. So here's another movie that's that was on the list that I didn't know who, I didn't know who was directing it. Uh, James McTeague directed this, who did uh, V for Vendetta and Ninja Assassin. You remember that guy? No kidding, for yeah. real? Yeah, that's, this is that guy. Okay, I, I've all... So... I was already interested because it looked like I don't know. It looked kind of weird, mm-hmm. and it looked like it might be good and all the for some of the wrong reasons. Right. You know, what it kind of reminded me of, and I'm pretty sure it's the same producer, if I'm not mistaken. You ever seen that movie Obsessed? Yeah, a little bit with <laughs> with uh, Beyonce and Ali Larder. Yeah, I think I know. Who, who's the male lead in that? I think it's Idris Elba. Is it? it yeah, might be. Yeah, it was just like when he was younger yeah will packer is the producer he okay. does a lot of those like obsessed girls trip uh was it Idris Elba? oh let's uh let's try no it's just bugging me yes it is it is Idris Elba. okay I, th- I thought 
sounded right. Yeah, Will, another Will Packer thriller. This definitely looks fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it, it's I don't I, I noticed I said fun and not good. No, yeah, I would say because, that that that's kind of how I felt about this. Yeah, I'm hoping it, looks, it is. Looks silly, but but it looks like it's got a decent amount of action. Yeah, there's another. And it's interesting too because Gabriel Union has her spinoff TV show where she's a cop coming out soon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So this will be interesting to see her in a more extensive action role that isn't Cradle to the Grave. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, Gabriel Union. I'm, you know, I'd like to see her come back up on the uptick. Yeah. I was a big Family Matters fan as a kid. Okay. Like, like me some Urkel. Like me some Reginald Vell Johnson. I hear that. Um, so, and then yeah. Af- so yeah, that's breaking in. And then after that, we've got Terminal, which we've talked a decent bit about. Not sure what to think of it. Oh, man. Wow. So that's coming out the same weekend. As Breaking In? Yeah. You only got one. You What do you I, choose? I mean, I'll probably... I might end up seeing either both. Or I might end up seeing both. But let's say you can only choose one. What do you got? God, this is really a bad choice. Because I could see both being either really, either decent or really bad for uh, for different reasons, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like, I could see Terminal being, like, decent or, like, a really good time because it's so bad or if it's, like, so bonkers or weird. It just, like, doesn't work. Yeah, or I could see it just being boring, you know? Yeah, breaking... No, see, that's what I feel like breaking in might do is it might be, like, too much space between the action. Yeah. God, I don't know. I might say Terminal just because I like the colors of it and maybe I'll get a better looking movie, but you know what? (sighs) Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's a such hard a choice. weird. You know, you could flip a so coin. You, so you, yeah, you'd say terminal by a hair. By a hair, just I don't a know. little hair. I'd, I'd probably seriously just flip a coin. Yeah. So yeah, if I, you know, if I had to choose, I, I think I might choose. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I think maybe terminal by a hair, but also flip a coin. Yeah. The next movie on the docket is Deadpool Two, which we've talked about a little yes, bit. Talked about the last show, I believe, but. uh Okay. I'm cautiously optimistic, I guess, right. is that. Because that's May 18th. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else coming out that weekend? There is the next movie on this list, in fact. Uh, oh. Director, writer-director Paul Schrader's First Reformed. Oh, well, that that could be pretty interesting, but this seems like a rather obvious choice if you have to choose one. Yeah, probably Deadpool 2. David Leitch. Yeah, and it's, while First Reformed... Will definitely act as some good counter programming for Deadpool too, because it's a little different kind of a movie. Even though they're both dark, <laughs> it's yeah, the man. only thing they have in common, least common denominator. Well, but Deadpool is funny dark, funny dark, but this is just dark. Yeah, I I watched the trailer and at first I thought. Is this just about a priest losing his faith? And I was a little bored, and then shit goes all sorts of sideways. It's like the Bad Samaritan trailer. You're watching yeah. it, and you're like, is this just about a kid being an asshole? And yeah, then you yeah. see what the real thing's about, and you're like, oh. Yeah, because okay. it's like a man is say freed comes to him, and they, she says that they're... Her husband. Her husband's part of an eco-terrorist group. Yeah, and he's like building bombs and stuff. <laughs> I love how she just says to him, don't tell anyone, okay? Yeah, like... <laughs> Um, this is, I'm gonna have to tell like, like the ATF. <laughs> I, you know, uh, yeah, no, I'm not keeping your secret. Yeah, this is so. The trailer really kind of took me by a good surprise. Like I was like, okay, so this is. First of all, the past couple Paul Schrader movies uh, have that not I've, been good. No, like he had one where it was called like Doggy Dog. And then the, the other one with, uh, what's it called? The other one with Nick Cage called, like, The Dying of the Light. And then, like, he had the Lindsay Lohan one before that. They all just look, like, really kind of cheaply made, not great, kind of thin characters and stories. Whereas this is, like, first of all, first frame, you're like, this looks like an A24 movie. And it yeah. is. And it just, someone, one of the quotes in the trailer was, like, it's like Taxi Driver, but for, taxi driver, but for the live leak generation. And I'm like, okay, those are two things you you're, you're catching my. Uh, you don't you don't hear live leak mentioned in uh, in critic critic blurbs. reviews, <laughs> yeah, because that's kind of like yeah, it, it's like what do you say? It's like Taxi Driver meets like videos of people doing drugs. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like excuse me, it's what? And then they show the big reveal, which is like you know obviously Amanda Seyfried's uh, husband and all that mess. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm just you know, 
there, there's one shot though that I thought was a little weird, and I'm hoping it's just a dream sequence because otherwise I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Yeah, it looks kind of surreal. Where, no, he, it is, dude. He's just floating. Yeah, I'm thinking that's uh, a, uh, either a drug trip scene or some kind of a dream. I, I hope like hell it is because if there's a supernatural element added to this, then that just seems completely dumb. Yeah, and it'd definitely be something new for uh, for Paul Schrader territory, I think. Either that or maybe it's some idiotic art house type thing. Like, have you ever seen, uh, what is it, Bad Lieutenant? Yeah. Oh my god. I have to say, that's probably one of my least favorite movies I've ever seen. Really? Well, it's just pretentious to the max. Y- you know that stuff with Jesus and all that? Where he just, like, shows up? <laughs> yeah. I- I'm just hoping that the, the the shot I'm talking about in this trailer has nothing to do with any sort of, you know, scene that's at all similar or of that ilk mm. from Bad Lieutenant. So yeah. then after that, we've got another... Another very dark art house film. Yes. Uh, also by a small studio. Yes. It's a tale about a, a smuggler and his motley crew, and it's it's kind of a gangster picture, if you will. Okay. It's called Han Solo. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, but it... Okay, so... The Solo Solo movie. That's right. It's... Uh, what, what is it called? Oh, Solo, A Star Wars Tale. Is that the official title? Uh, let's see. Solo... Uh, solo, a Star Wars story. Whatever. Okay. Or simply the Han solo. solo movie. The Han Solo movie. This, of course, ta- you know, had a lot of. It's getting a lot of press. All sorts of different press. Um, uh, they say uh, there's uh, some directors. all press is good press. Uh, but I guess. that that very well may not be the case with yeah, this movie. We'll find out. Been a lot of stuff going on. Fans being upset over the trailer. Director swap outs. And I'm kind of just like, don't forget, yeah, yeah. I'll see it. Yeah, that, <laughs> just that's like a little, yeah, it's whatever. That's it kind of okay. Yeah, I kind of think it looks fine. I mean, uh, the trailer, it's weird. I can almost tell that they're not trying to give you too much, which is perfectly Good, yeah. ideal in most scenarios. Mm-hmm. But it also kind of seems like, yeah, I could see this trailer also hiding. Yeah, that what it are might they not, hiding? You know, it might be hiding that it's. Right, not great. <clears throat> I mean, I think it looks fine. I yeah. don't, I don't think it's going to be anything like mind blowing or, or right. I'm just kind of uh, yeah. I kind of feel the same way about this. The everything I know about this movie is the way I feel about Last Jedi. Is like I'm kind of on neither side of the debate, which is like it's the greatest Star Wars movie ever, and this is the worst Star Wars movie this ever. This movie like, sucks. George Lucas should ceremonially burn the master print <laughs> yeah it's like i you know it just it looks like another movie and maybe that's coming from a place where i didn't really grow up with star wars as you know as uh closely i didn't grow up with it as closely as other people did but i'm basically i, I kind of just have very very middling feelings about it like i'm not very excited i'm not very worried i guess i guess this is sort of a positive thing i have pretty low standards for this yeah yeah I'm not expecting anything amazing, mm-hmm. it, so as long as it meets my expectations, that's fine. Yeah, it could. I think it, it very well could, since they're not exact. As, as I stated, they're not very high. No. So that wraps up May pretty much. But one thing that's interesting to point out is there's not a ton of blockbusters this year, right? Because it seems like traditionally, in the last few years, March has been sort of a pre-summer warm-up. Yeah, and then April's a little breather, and then May is the beginning of the summer season, I guess. Mm-hmm. But really, the, there's two big blockbusters in May since Infinity War. Ah, sorry, Infinity War moved to April, right? Because it's now just Deadpool and Han Solo. So that's just kind of interesting how that's sort of changed the way the movie scheduling has gone. Yeah, it's a little bit more interspersed now. It seems definitely. All right, so that does it for the month of May. Hey, moving on, we've got some reviews. Actually, just one, so Mm -hmm. not plural. But anyway, Robert, you saw Pacific Rim Uprising, did you not? I sure did see Pacific Rim Uprising, Alex. All right, so uh, did you see the first one? I sure did see the first Pacific Rim. Um, Did you like the first one? I like the first one a lot. I think it's, I feel like it's, you know, the better version of a lot of the latter Transformer films. 
you know, where the action is is definitely the main part of why you're seeing the film, but the characters don't suck. They're fine. And the action is, is prime, like, it's prime cut action. Like, it's, it's pretty great. Um, I like the first one a lot. So I was very, I don't want to say excited, but I... When I heard that there was love for it, enough for them to get a sequel, mm-hmm. I was kind of glad because I know it didn't perform very well here. Um, it made most of its money overseas. What a which, shock. Yeah, it makes pretty much the most sense in the world. Um, but I am I was glad they made a sequel. Then I saw the movie. Uh, it was and, bad. You know... So it sounds like... It sounds like the first one is definitely better. Oh, yeah. But, it's without a shred of doubt better. Okay, so I guess my main question is... Since the reason I never saw the first one, or the second one, obviously, for that matter, is aside from robots and stuff crashing around, which I can get in other movies, maybe not Transformers, but just in general, I just didn't see anything appealing about the characters outside of the robots and the monsters. Yeah, it's that it's that issue kind of to the max in this. The yeah. characters are even more stripped down. You know, there's no more... Uh, there's no stacker Pentecost who is, you know, Idris Elba's character from the first one who is kind of a badass. Um, you don't have a protagonist that's like really, um, well, I don't know. Maybe the protagonist is kind of on the same level, but you don't have the side characters aren't there. Uh, they do stuff with Charlie Day's character, um, and the other scientist that, you know, their friend, he's friends with played by Bern Gorman. I think his name is Gottlieb in the movie. Um, but you know, they were kind of the comic relief in the first movie and now they, I won't get into spoilers, but they do something with that relationship. Should we just get into spoilers? Cause I don't care. Okay. We'll talk about spoilers. So Charlie Day's the villain in the movie. Okay. And it's dumb. It's terrible. It's a horrible, horrible idea. And, and especially because he was the comic relief in the first movie and like, See, he's supposed to be yeah. a character you root for. And, like, they corrupt, they do a whole corruption plot thing where it's like, ah, the kaiju, the people in the, or the the kaiju, like, big bads in the other dimension, like, they call them the precursors. Mm -hmm. They're, like, infecting his mind and stuff because he's, uh, it's it's just not, it's it's a bad part of the movie, (laughs) if I'm being just blatantly honest. It sucks. So, what you're basically saying is what's wrong with Transformers movies particularly the latter ones is also a problem here in a way in a way i I would definitely say they're the big issues i have with the latter transformers films is that i'm just always bored watching them the action is always just super kind of like non-stop and never really is engaging and i wasn't really bored watching this it's just that the stuff that i was watching it either pissed me off or (laughs) i was just kind of like oh okay this is decent you know it's not great so is the, are the action scenes at least good? Yeah, I actually wanted more action scenes, which is kind of the trailer for this. The trailers for this movie sell a different movie a little bit. Like you think there's going to be a lot of uh, Jaeger, which is the, the giant, robot, right? giant robots, Jaeger versus Kaiju fights, which there aren't a lot of. But uh, yeah, I thought the trailer implied that it was the Jaeger versus Jaeger fights was the big thing. Well, it's like. It's. It is. I don't know. I didn't feel that way. I th- that at least in the trailers I saw, they were like, they showed all. Or at least that's maybe. Maybe I wasn't even paying attention. Maybe I was more fixated on like, yeah, there's some of the Jaeger versus uh, Kaiju fights, and I was like, it's going to be more like Pacific Rim One, when in fact it's like not. It's it. It is a lot of those Jaeger versus Jaeger fights, which, I guess it. it if they showed enough of it in the trailers, it I probably just let it slip by me because I didn't really care. See that's. From what it sounds like you're talking about, it seems like this is the problem, I think, that a lot of action and or larger blockbuster series or franchises kind of run into. If action's your main thing, then just have a lot of that. Yeah. But if if your series just sucks at having good characters, you shouldn't try it and all of a sudden, you know, add, add depth when it's, you know, it, had, it didn't really work before. Why is it going to work now? Yeah, there's, they, it just, it felt like, I made the comparison in my head to Kingsman 2. It felt like this one did a lot of the same, it it relied on a lot of the same pitfalls, which was it tried to world build, you know, and it tried to extend the character scope and all that mess, but uh, it, it all ended up 
drawing focus away from what I'm there to see, which is I want to see robots punch monsters in the face. Like, this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And we don't get really that much of it at all until the end, which I say is probably the best part because the end fight, all the fights, they're all really solid looking. The effects are fine. Uh, The choreography is fun. You know, there's some cool, like, use of setting. You know, there's a fight on, like, a giant frozen lake that is neat. Yeah, that see that part looked cool in the trailer. Yeah, but the, the they do stuff with the plot where it's like I know what you're trying to do with this, just don't do this. Let's just see more fights. Uh, they do it that that damn twist with Charlie Day where they make him a villain, and it it just it robs the movie of an entire element that I loved in the first movie, which was Charlie Day's character. Um, is his acting just awful as a villain, or is it fine? You know, I. I I'm just saying, it's like, not very good. See when but you say I, when you, I feel like I don't blame him for it because it's like the fuck. But when you say that he's a villain, it reminds me <laughs> of the <laughs> the always sunny where it's like, oh no, we're in Charlie's bad place where he breaks things. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he has a the little blan- bit the blanket over his head. Hello, <laughs> it's just like, a little bit. I just, That's why it's so ridiculous, though, because you're like, I don't, I don't see, and that was this, that was the case in Pacific Rim One is I don't see anybody else. Like, I, Charlie Day's not a Daniel Day-Lewis, where it's like, wow, yeah, this guy is a different person. It's like, it's Charlie Day. Right. But I, I just, it felt, it, it was just wrong. It felt weird and out of place, and it felt like a bad decision. It was a bad creative decision. It didn't pan out. That's the problem, is I think when, when people don't like the fact that they make something simple... Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just an action movie. But you know what? You could make it just action, but have it be really awesome. Like Hard Boiled. Right. There, There's maybe five minutes of dialogue in that movie. Right, right. Hard Boiled is... is... It's just like nonstop shooting, but it's John Woo nonstop shooting, so it's done really well. And it's, right. And it's artfully done. Mm-hmm. And it's like, just be satisfied with what you're good at. Don't try and, you know, don't try and rock the boat. Oh, well, maybe if we have this twist that no one's gonna like, yeah, that that that'll that'll get the audience, that'll win the respect of our peers. And it might it might sound like I'm ripping the movie to shreds, but I'm only really doing that because I enjoyed the first one a lot. No, I, I, I know I just, what you mean. I had super, you know, I at least wanted this to be like, you know, I, ah, screw the critics. I thought I thought it was a good time, and I I, it's a good time, but it I definitely get why critics don't really, you know, like it. It's it's you know. It tries to do too much. It there, juggles too many subplots and thematic things and sociopolitical things, and I'm like, so, I don't really care about it. So any the of this. main plot is what exactly? Without going into a ridiculous amount of detail. So basic plot. The basic plot is John Boyega is kind of a party boy, mm-hmm. and he's Idris Elba's son from the first movie. So he's like Chris Pontius. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a party boy. Pretty much, yeah. Bow, he's bow, bow. Yeah. <laughs> but not not as fun. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, you know, kind of a screw up, but uh kind of reminds me of like what they tried to do or what they tried. What they did do with Captain Kirk in the first Star Trek did and succeeded in doing right. making it better. Um but it's like, you know, I don't want to be my dad all this shit daddy issue stuff. And he's right. kind of a he's a screw up and he falls uh Falls in with this other girl who's kind of like a junkyard orphan. All right, orphan. What, is, what is the plot? So they're training. Did, did, did you, no, just like, what is this? What's the main conflict? Not not a synopsis. There's about three. So the main conflict is these kids trying to figure out how to fight in these Jaegers. There's also a, a conflict involving drones. And it's about well, this Chinese company that's creating Jaegers that aren't, they don't need to be piloted by people anymore. They can be piloted by drones. Okay. And then the movie kind of turns into Charlie Day uses these drones to open a new breach in the ocean, which is basically a rift in space time that is what the first movie's about, where all these monsters climb through. Okay. Um, and that's going to end up, you know, destroying the world, basically, in okay. short. But there's a couple different things this movie's about, and that's the problem. Is like okay, so the it, first half is about like yeah. fight, is about like the, you know, John Boyega trying to teach this girl and like the, these other cadets or rangers or whatever like how to fight in these Jaegers and then it's the second half is about them kind of trying to figure out how to save the world um, but there's some other mess in there like this shit about drones like I'm like I didn't want to see this like I, this is not what I wanted like it's uh, it, remind, it reminded me a little bit of like 
uh, Jason Bourne, like the 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 most recent one, where it's like I didn't see that because I thought it looked bad. Well, it's like it reminded me of like reminded me of that because there's like a lot of talk in that about like apps and like you know like social media and like spying and stuff. And I'm like, this is not what Jason Bourne is about. This is about like Jason Bourne's a man on the run thriller. And you're neglecting that fucking simple premise right now. Right. I think that's what it sounds like the issue here is you can't juggle so many things at once. Yeah, it's it it spreads itself too thin and it suffers because of it. And it's not as if like any of what they're trying to do is like particularly awful. Like the relation like the coming of age stuff is like it's fine. It's just I've I've seen it before and it's not what I wanted to see in this movie. Um but let me again reiterate that when action is happening, it's very entertaining. Like, there's great action scenes, um, and the effects are really fun, and the choreography is awesome. But I just, I wanted a little bit more of that and a little bit less of the, everything else the movie's trying to spring on you. Okay, so it sounds like I'm, I made the right decision to not go see it. Yeah. What would you give it? I'd give it a soft six. Man, that that is like the harshest soft six out of ten review I've ever heard. And again, I, it's... It's very harsh, but it's because I. The only reason I'm giving it that much more of a, a higher score is because I, again, I like the property a lot. I think it's fun. It's a fun idea. Okay, so this is like like X Men: The Last Stand is a yeah. soft six. Yeah, yeah, it's like or or a three. Because when out of five, right? Because when X Men: The Last Stand is on, I mean, when Magneto's throwing the Golden Gate Bridge around, it's like, yes, this is what I wanted to see. But then when they're killing half the cast, you're like, you're why are you doing this? Uh, you you just yelling at the screen, right? Right. <laughs> it's kind of like that with this. Yeah. And instead of killing Cy- Cyclops, they make Charlie Day the bad guy. Off topic. Speaking of yelling at the screen, mm-hmm. I forgot to mention this. Mm-hmm. So you know, a couple weeks ago we we're talking about annoying theater habits. Yeah. When I saw Unsane, anytime someone was getting like stabbed or like hit like their head against something, yeah, this person literally screamed like, "Oh, really?" It was so awkward. I, I mean, like, ah! it's like, calm down. It's just a movie. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, so Pacific Rim was not great. I, uh, I, any, I can't, any closing thoughts? I, I will be there if they make a third one, reluctantly. But I, you know, it makes, these that, movies make me smile. Like when I, when I see, I don't care what, even if the, the movie could be trash. But if there's a scene in the movie where someone is, is taking like a fistful of cars and like throwing them at a monster, it's like, I'm not going to like, you know, be like, no, dumb. I'm gonna be like, yeah. I'm gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> this is a dope ass fucking action scene. But yeah, but it it sounds like if you're gonna have something that's super action packed, mm-hmm. then I guess you don't really need good. You don't really need good characters. Yeah, but it helps to have like some little semblance that you can be like, oh, he's this way or that way. Like Rambo, it's just like he's very very stoic, and he's got his whole like. His baggage. He's seen some shit. Mm-hmm. John McClane's a smartass. It's like, you need one element at least that people can easily identify. And that's what I felt the first one had that this didn't. There okay. Was, there's at yeah. least three characters in there that I liked. All right. So in closing, uh, I can't necessarily send people to go see this. Um, if you're a big fan of the first one, I recommend it. Just on the merits of this being its sequel, um, you'll probably be disappointed. Um, or who knows? You might you might like it. The action's good. The acting's fine. Uh, it just it spreads itself a little bit too thin, and I wish it stuck to its guns and what the whole premise of the franchise was, which was robots fighting monsters. So yeah, six out of ten. All right, there you go. Pacific Rim review. And now we're gonna do a new segment. It's called Torches and Pitchforks, which of course makes reference to the classic angry mob scene at the end of Frankenstein the 1931 Universal Classic Monster film. Now, why would we use that for a name of a segment? Well, it's simply because we're going to talk about having unpopular opinions. And everyone knows having an unpopular opinion means one of two things. You're either a contrarian, or perhaps you just thought differently. But that isn't so on the internet. Or it may not be so at your local pub. Or your local group activity. Whatever the place, whatever the situation... Sometimes you're just a dick for thinking differently. But are you truly? Perhaps that is just their opinion. So, now we're going to talk about three unpopular opinions we have about films. First one that Robert and I both agree on, then one that Robert holds, and then one that I hold. So first up, we're going to talk about Guardians Galaxy 2 
and why it's a pretty weak Marvel movie. I was disappointed with it in, I, after I was, watching it. I was very disappointed. And what I did is I recently rewatched it to see, you know, because sometimes your expectations, you're looking for something very specific. Mm-hmm. And then you watch it a second time and you think, now that I know what this is, I like it better. Right. That was not the case. I liked it even less the second time around. Yeah, I remember after watching this just being very... I remember, Actually, no. I remember before watching it, hearing all the, the buzz, the hype, and being excited to see it because I'm obviously a big fan of the first one. Um, and then walking out of it and being like, what? Am I all right? Like, is there something wrong with me? Like, what? I don't get it. And then I thought on it more and I realized that for me, the movie just... There wasn't as much at stake and what the movie was about didn't feel as important as the first one did because you have the first one which is they call it the main tension if you will the, the what this movie's about is will Groot Rocket Drax Gamora and Star-Lord team up in time to stop Ronan the Accuser um which is a good solid action movie plot but then the second one is will Star-Lord and his dad ever get to bond together see and that's that stems from what I've been talking about. When I see a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, I don't want to see, oh yeah, it, it's really a good character piece. Like, right. Like, get out of my face. Yes, having good characters helps, and I like the characters, but the main point is that it's an action-adventure movie. Right. And again, just like with John McClane, like I was saying earlier, he has that one thing, he's sort of a smartass. But you put this smartass in an action movie because that's what the series has established itself as. Mm-hmm. I don't need this soap opera bullshit. And I just, I can't understand how people sort of blindly defended this. Yeah, I, I just, I wasn't, you had that central plot that was just so weak for me. And it, it ultimately right? just brought everything else down and it made me start to nitpick things, other things in the movie. Like right. certain scenes, certain lines of dialogue, certain plot holes and it just the movie just kind of fell apart in my hands you know that's the thing is i felt like the whole ego thing was so boring Mm -hmm. that by the time the big reveal comes it's like who cares right and on top of that didn't it seem like all the parts that could have been expanded upon would have been far more interesting because groot and uh rocket right Mm -hmm. they're left behind with the ravagers right all that stuff would have been a much better storyline to explore further right that to me seemed like that could have been the a storyline instead of it being because it seemed to me like that was the b storyline for sure yeah and and drax was completely squandered you know also yeah and the other thing speaking of drax though didn't it seem like there were certain lines that Rocket said, and I felt like that sounds like something Drax would say or do. Yeah, like the I think the winking, the thing. winking line. Where yeah. It's like he's winking. I think that means he's being. He means the opposite or whatever. It felt like a Drax line, but it was said by Rocket instead. He's like, or no, that he didn't know how to wink. Yeah, yeah. Am it's I like, doing it right or something? Yeah, yeah. That that seems like something Drax would do because Drax is sort of over literal and sort of dense and this is what i'm talking about like because that central plot with ego and star lord is so weak we start to notice stuff like this right and maybe maybe i wouldn't have cared as much but right with with such a boring storyline it's like wow i really just don't care about this Mm -hmm. and then i felt like i was watching a, a network tv show with the will they or won't they with uh Star Lord and uh, Gamora, Gamora, and I just I just didn't care. I also did. I wasn't crazy about the Gamora and uh, Nebula stuff. I hated that. That was that was one of my least favorite parts mm-hmm. because I, I don't need this bullshit. Like bad guys have feelings too. Yeah. When it's done right, for example, the motivation for Killmonger in Black Panther. Again, I didn't think he was amazing or whatever, but I definitely got his character and it worked. Mm-hmm. Like, you understood why he was pissed off and that he had feelings and all this other shit. But Nebula is not about that. Mm -hmm. Nebula is supposed to basically be a a killing machine. Yeah. I just wanted a sister, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It just blows my mind that people defend this. Yeah, it's 
it's definitely one of the weaker ones for me. I, I just wasn't crazy about it. I, I did like Yondu a lot. Yeah. And it kind of sucks that he's again, dead. <laughs> right. Spoilers, I guess. That's what I'm saying is I felt like the whole Ravengers thing would have been a lot more interesting to focus on. Yeah. Maybe you could tie in Ego to that plot, too. Yeah. Like, the splitting them up just, just didn't seem necessary. No. The other thing was the action. There's a couple of scenes that I had big problems with. The one that I thought was extremely boring was the one where Yandu has that thing, you know, the little... Uh, oh, the arrow? Yeah, the arrow that he whistles around. Mm-hmm. He just walks through and then just god mode, just kills everyone in there, and it's like it takes him no effort at all, mm-hmm. and it's just, it's not interesting. There's no stakes. Right. Because even like in Ragnarok, you know, when Hela's just wrecking all those dudes on yeah. Asgard... She still has to do stuff and, like, move, and there's still danger, like, imminent danger. She has to, like, have offensive moves as well as defensive ones. Right. She still has to do things. Like, even though she does it pretty much with ease, he literally just walks, and the arrow just wastes all these guys. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so boring. Yeah. I I thought that that was, it's almost, like, unforgivably boring. I thought that the final battles of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 also are pretty starkly different in that this one in 2 it's it's so small scale in comparison even though it's not this takes place over like an entire planet you know volume yeah. 2 but it felt so small because it only involves like four characters five characters it's the really the Guardians crew and Ego and then the Ravagers at the end show up right I think yeah they do or what's his name the one played by James Gunn's brother yeah, yeah, I can't think of his name, but he was, I liked him in it. Yeah, but. that's what I'm saying. There's another good character, and it's just, right. to me, that's that would have been a better point of focus than, like, wow, we're on a planet, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, but in, in my, in the point being, in Guardians 1, you had the final battle there take place on Xandar with, like, all those ships, and, like, the sh- they make that shield, and, like, Ronan the Accuser ship right. comes in. It's like, there's so much at stake, like... And hundreds of thousands of people are dying. You know, it's in cra- It's like a crazy. It's crazy, and right. this just didn't. It didn't amp it up for me. This was just uh, one guy with laser powers versus another guy, basically. Yeah, and I mean, it did. It did look cool for the most part. It's just to me, it was too little, too late. It was a disappointment. I thought. Well, for sure. And you know what? I'll, I'll say this one thing that I feel like doesn't get enough shade. Hmm. Mantis. What the hell was that? Yeah, I, Mantis, I forgot Mantis, she was in it. <laughs> she beats up the entire Avengers in the 70s. Yeah. And she's reduced to whatever the hell this version was supposed to be. Yeah, I hope she has more to do in, in Infinity War. Because I, I, I thought her character was very kind of just randomly inserted. You know, as being like Ego's like apprentice. Handler. Yeah, it's, like, it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. She can make him sleep or whatever. She makes him sleep, but it's like she's a, a huge ass kicker in the comics. And that, was, that wasn't even remotely present in this movie. Yeah. So that's it for part one of Grab Your uh, Pitchforks and Torches. Mm-hmm. Part two, we're going to talk about something. Because uh, Robert shares an unpopular opinion. I do. Perhaps with some people. Perhaps. I don't, I don't agree in this case. Mm-hmm. We were, of course, talking about, Robert, you didn't really love The Breakfast Club all that much, did you? Not all that much, no. I did not love it. But Okay, when you say didn't love it, was that mean 3.5 out of 5? Yes. Between a 3 and a 3.5, I'd say. So okay. for me, like a 6.5 or 7-ish. Oh, 6.5. That's rough, man. I, I You know, for me, it's it's... There's a lot in this that I just didn't, I, I wasn't a huge fan of. I didn't think it aged very well. You know, there's a lot of jokes in here that I was like, this would have been funny if I had grown up with it at like 11 or 12 years old. And I get why people like it, and I get why people treasure it, because they probably grew up with it at that age, and that and those jokes informed upon their personality. But I didn't have that, I just didn't. I didn't, I didn't grow up with it. So watching it as a 20-year-old, a jaded piece of shit 20-year-old, I was just kind of like, oh. It's not a bad movie, and I, I definitely think it, it's, it does some things very well. It's just, I think it's kind of, in addition to being a little, for me, it doesn't age particularly well joke-wise and sometimes even subject matter-wise, it's structured weird, you know? I just, I, it felt like there's like 10 minutes missing from the movie. Like, there's a sequence at the end where it's like, they all have that 
I actually like this the this the scene where they're all just like talking like in their yeah, high man. on the, on the second they're all floor. coming together. Yeah, I like that scene, but then it's like there's literally like they it's like cut to Ali Sheedy's hot. Like, it's, like, literally, like, she's hot now. She put on makeup. Mm-hmm. And then, like, her and, uh, what's his name? Kiss. Uh, what's the guy? Michael Anthony Hall. No, other guy. Uh, Estevez. Emilio, Emilio Estevez. Yeah. The Mighty Ducks yeah. guy. Yeah, Ali Sheedy and Emilio Estevez kiss. And then it's, like, Q, uh, what's the song? Don't You Forget About Me. And I'm, like, the movie's over? Man, it was, it was about, it was representational about, like, oh, I'm just, a, you know, lumbering dumbass jock and she's like I'm weird and it's yeah. it's about them being different but coming together and of course they'd probably never be friends after this but that's not the point it's about like whoa we're not so different man so that was Even actually something I liked different. I, li- I actually no because I've been in situations like that where you're like at like a church event or something and there's yeah. like two po- like I was the geeky kid, of course, and, like, there'd be, like, a popular dude and, like, a jock and, like, a popular girl, and we'd all be, like, chill with each other for whatever we had to do and then go back to school and we, like, just pretended each- no one existed. It's like the, like in uh, Outsiders. It's like, you know, if I see you around, I can't say hi or whatever. Right. Wait, what not that Outsiders? I think Where, so. It's like, no, it's, like, it's before the big fight. They're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're all right, but we still have to beat the shit out of each other tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I like what the movie did. It's just, I had, again, I had the misfortune of growing up seeing other movies that, you know, followed in the footsteps of Breakfast Club doing similar things. Um, but, you know, being a 20-year-old and watching the OG, if you will, seeing the movie that originally started all of that, I just, I was like, yeah, I know all of this already. So I wasn't entirely thrilled by by it. But I get, I Please believe me when I say I get why people love it. And I don't think it's a bad movie. I just, I personally wasn't a big fan of it. That's crazy, man. I'm going to say in its defense, Jod Nelson. He's great. He's great, man, because he's the, he's like the crux of the group when you think about it. He's the one because he's, he's so obnoxious, mm-hmm. but sometimes obnoxiousness in his case is a way of reaching out. Well, that he's and trying, his... he's trying to make a connection, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying you, to connect you just didn't by get it, Robert. Try, trying to connect by sticking his head in in Molly Ringwald's pants. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, As I mentioned, there's some stuff in there. I'm like, okay, this was 1980. What? Yeah. <laughs> so that that was probably not his best approach. No. <laughs> okay. But ignoring that. Yes. <laughs> ignoring that. I think it's a movie about people coming together. Yes. And, uh, uh, I like the the heart of the movie is pure, even though the means yeah. are like, eh, I don't know if that would fly nowadays, but I mean, what movie, you know, there's going to be very few movies of yore that do. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty apparent in most 80s movies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'll admit I didn't love it, but I, I, I did like it for the most part. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I in in its defense, I say that uh, you're crazy, but that's again in the great words of the dude. Well, yeah, that's like uh, that's just your opinion, man. It sure is. Okay, so that applies to both of us. And now we move on to the third topic, where it's something that I think that Robert disagrees with. Mm. We've all heard of classic movies, and for whatever reason, they'll be remembered forever and ever. Mm-hmm. And Citizen Kane is one of them. And I just, I'm just not a big fan of it. Yeah. I would give it a 2.5 out of 5. Oof, that's rough. There's a lot of it that's really boring. And let me put Citizen Kane in just a few words. It's about a boy who loses his innocence and just becomes a huge dick when he grows up. Yeah. And then he dies. And then what? Rosebud. It's like, what is Rosebud? And then every single character, it's the same. Yeah, I remember old Charlie. He was a real dick. And then... (laughs) And then they go to the opera singer. Yeah, I remember Charlie. He was a real dick. <laughs> they go to the like old guy who's like his caretaker. Oh yes, I remember Mr. Kane. He was a real dick. <laughs> Pretty much. It's just like it's just so repetitive. Yeah. And I understand the deep focus, huge mm-hmm. thing. Basically all modern movies owe Citizen Kane and credit because of its cinematography. Mm-hmm. And I understand that it completely changed the game of how things are made. But there's also times where things change the game, but it's also like they're great movies too. Right. 
because a few years before that, a movie that really changed the game for sound, actually was more like a decade before Ziz and Kane, All Quiet on the Western Front. Fantastic movie. Right. Of course, based off a fantastic book, helps. Mm -hmm. But it was a good movie, and it was game-changing because of its sound design. So this, I feel like people are too hung up on the fact that, oh, it had flashbacks. Oh, it had good cinematography. But it's like, did you watch this movie? Like, was this entertaining to you guys? Yeah. Just the, like, the rise and fall of a man who was a complete dick to everyone. Yeah. Who started off kind of cool, but then became more of a douche as he got older. Citizen Kane. Like, like how, how would you, like, make a trailer for that? <laughs> I, I just don't know how you do that. I definitely, I surprisingly, I sympathize with a lot of what you're saying. I, I do think that it's like, I, I don't necessarily agree that it's the best movie of all time. I can see why people feel that okay. way. Before you continue, that to me is, like, an outrageous statement. Yeah, like, I already disagree with that. Yeah. But... I, I do I do think it's a damn I like the movie a lot and it's it, I think it all comes down to a matter of preference like obviously a dude being a dick for two hours is probably not going to be fun for some people to watch but it's not it's also not fun it's just like it's boring yeah that's like, it's not going to be it's not going to be entertainment but I that's for me I mean. just imagine the like radio announcer a harrowing tale of a man who becomes a dick to everyone yeah <laughs> see it in theaters it'll make you laugh it'll make you cry it'll make you say wow this guy's an asshole. Yeah. But for me, I I particularly, I was entertained by it at, at least. And I, at most, I was pretty damn entertained by it. Like, uh, Orson Welles is super hammy in this. And it's hilarious. Especially towards the end when he gets all the makeup on and he's, like, throwing shit around his room. Like, I just, I, I love how, like... That scene, with, that's, that last scene, it's, it's just so, like, actory. I love it. <laughs> Where he's just throwing all the shit in his house. It's like, oh, I get it. He's got a lot of stuff, but he's empty inside. Whoa, man. Deep. But think about it. We, if without that scene, we wouldn't have that same scene from the room where Tommy's doing it to all the stuff in his room. You know what? I haven't seen the room from start to finish. <sighs> That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. We'll we'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> but go. I, you know what? If if you, I know a lot of people who weren't big fans of, of Citizen Kane, and I, I totally get why. It's It is very... You know, it's a little bit more of a of a slow burn. Uh, it's got a little bit. The subject matter isn't very juicy. Uh, you know, the characters can be considered a little dull. Um, I just I dug it. I thought it was really really uh, interesting and kind of a, a an in, like a intriguing story of like, you know, what wealth means and if it means shit at the end of the day. But I totally get why like people would be like, yeah, it's kind of boring. Yeah. I just I kind of feel about it how how Peter Griffin feels about it. <laughs> Did not care for the Godfather. No, no, not that. Oh, when oh. he's just like he, he's just like Rosebud, and then it like cuts to Peter. It's like it was his sled. Yeah, yeah. I just shaved you two hours. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's just that's just the the way I saw it. It just didn't do much for me. Yeah. Now again, it wasn't a terrible movie. I just didn't see anything particularly of note about it. Other right. Other than some cinematography. It's interesting how you are able to communicate an opinion without resorting to hyperbole or aggrandizement or exaggeration. Okay, what I meant to say was, uh, tw- okay, first of all, I'm going to send this article to BuzzFeed, and it's called 23 and a Half Reasons Why Citizen Kane is the Worst Movie Ever. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm going to make a follow-up article called 23 reasons why everyone arguing with me in the comments section is a bad person. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's in a sense the, the purpose of this segment, right? Is because we can come to the table and disagree on stuff reasonably. Yeah, like, I mean, like... And, and like, even agree on things. Like, I'll agree that, you know, Breakfast yeah. Club is like a cherished film. Like, I'm not gonna And I agree there's that. like, there's some dated humor. Right. But... Again, it's just a matter of, like, how much does that bother you or me in our scoring system? Right. And also, when when we're, you know, giving each other shit, like, how dare you say that? We're just we're just kidding. Yeah, we're just razzing. We're just razzing. That's, that's what this segment's about. So remember, if, you'd like, if uh, you'd like to grab a torch and pitchfork and tell us why we're wrong, go ahead. But maybe think twice. Yeah. Because don't be a dick. <laughs> Pretty much. 
Don't be like Charles Foster Kane. Or uh, Judd Nelson. Yeah, that's right. Or Ego. Don't have an ego. Yeah, don't have an ego like Ego. All right, that does it for uh, Grab Your uh, Torches and Pitchforks. All right, so now we're going to move on to our game segment. For our first game, we have a game, a new one, called Guess That Movie Based on the Foreign Title. So as some of you may be aware, or maybe not, uh, movies have to be marketed differently across, you know, the globe, um, and that includes changing the titles of certain films here and there. There have been famous examples all throughout history of movies having, you know, different titles and such, funny ones, interesting ones. So what we're going to be doing here with that premise is we're going to be feeding each other some of the foreign titles for films and having to guess uh, what those movies are. Best out of five, and we each have uh, two lifelines for the five questions that we are allowed to use. So without further ado, Alex, would you like to start? All right, yes, I would. All right, Robert. The first film in Brazil is known as Hard to Kill. In Czechoslovakia, it's known as Deadly Trap. Obviously, that's formerly, as Slovakia and Czech Republic are now separate countries. And in Spain, it's known as Crystal Jungle. Predator? Wrong. Uh, The answer was Die Hard. Crystal Jungle? Oh, because it's a building? Well, I'm or the glass? Sure. Yeah, I think oh. they meant like urban jungle or concrete Son jungle. Of a gun. Okay. Go- Google Translate, man. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Okay. So this this film, uh, in Argentina, it is known as Nothing to Lose. In Bulgaria, it is known as At Any Cost, and in Estonia, it is known as Through the Fire and Water. Backdraft. It's actually Hell or High Water. Oh my God. Yes. That seems so obvious now that I think about it. Yeah, some of some of these are tricky, man. Some All right. of these are real tricky. Okay, fine. Two can play at that game. In Turkey, this film is known as Kid Game. In okay. Poland, this movie is known as Fun Child. In Greece, this movie is known as She Looked at Satan. I'm going to guess Child's Play. Damn it. <laughs> See... What was it? Child game or fun yeah, child? Fun child that gave it away. That was a good one. That that was that was. I think you might be getting this one. In Hungarian, it is known as press baby press. In Turkish, it is known as full throttle. And in Estonia, it's known as rhythm of escape. Baby driver. Yes, that oh, is man. baby driver. Because I figured press baby press. <laughs> it's just wow. such an odd. So that's verbiage. Clearly, uh, I think that that maybe meant drive, baby drive, yes. like accelerate, press on the accelerator, Floor it and something. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Okay. Next up, we got in Portugal. This movie is called Life Is Not a Dream. In French Canada, it's called Back to Brooklyn. In Estonia, it's called Repeat Your Dream. Is it Requiem for a Dream? Yeah, that was a pretty easy one. Shit. Okay, what you got? In Lithuania, this film is known as Sneaky Pope. In Spain, specifically the Catalan region, it is known as Late Black. And in Greece, it's known as Crab Day. Crab Day? Yes. Crab Day? What are the other (laughs) ones? Crab Day, Sneaky Pope, and Late Black. God. Can, Remember, I, can yeah. I use a year, I gonna, a lifeline, get it, the year? 1975. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, God damn it. I was going to say that. I'm like, what else? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, that was hard. Wait, Dog that, Day Afternoon somehow got turned into. Crab Day. Crab Day. Sneaky Pope. Sneaky Pope. In Late Black. Okay, so clearly that was, uh. Something something happened. Something went awry in the translations. Yes. All right, two can play at that game. Up next, I've got a film in Estonia known as In the Lake. In Portugal, it's known as A Family Man. <laughs> okay, I think I know what this is. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it, this one might... Okay. Bulgaria, it's The Cool Blood. Is it uh, Friday the 13th? No, it's The Iceman. 
You know, the the one with Michael Shannon. Really? Plays Rich Kuklinski. Oh, okay. See, I, I thought it was going to be Friday the 13th because in the, in the lake. lake and Family Man, like, you know, the mom and, you know, yeah. Pat, what's her name? That was a good guess. Okay, yeah, that was, wow, that one got me. That one got me. It's a good movie, by the way. Yeah, I got to check that out. Really good. You should check it out. So, this one in Lithuania is known as I'm Asleep. In Romania, it is known as Risen from Ashes. And in Estonia, it's known as The Man Who Got Up. Uh, Passion of the Christ? It's actually Cinderella Man. Uh. <laughs> Some fucking how, it's Cinderella Man. That was a good one, man. I, I'm i asleep, I guess, is yeah. that's a real boxing, you know. All right, fair enough. Okay, for your final one, we've got in Norway, this movie, this film is called Dangerous Romance. In France, it is called Death on the Tail. And in Ta- wait, tail is in T A L E or T A I L? Um, I can't give you that information. Oh, really? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say tail is in a tail. Yeah, like a coat tail. Okay. I was just being annoying. Oh. All right. So in Greece, it's known as In the Shadow of Four Giants. Fucking. La- what would you year? Would you like a lifeline? I would. What What year is it? Uh, it is 1959. 59. In the Shadow of Four Giants? Is that what it was? What? Yes. <laughs> uh, Wizard of Oz? No, dude. 59, not 39. Oh, what am I talking about? Well, it's too late. The correct answer is North by Northwest. In the Oh, my God, yeah. Get right the in the road, Shadow the of Mount Four Rushmore. Giants. Shit the, on me. Right? Jesus God Almighty. So is that all of them? I got one more. Okay, what you got? In Slovenia, this is titled Customization. Oh, man. In Turkey... It's called Turning Inside Out. And in Estonia, it is How to Write a Cartoon. Okay, um, can I get a... Lo- I have one lifeline left, right? Yes, you do. Okay, I'd like to use my final lifeline. <clears throat> what year was this from? 2002. 2002, and it was called what again? Customization, Turning Inside Out, and How to Write a Cartoon. Oh my god. Um, Freddy Got Fingered? <laughs> Good guess, but it's... Adaptation. Oh. Somehow, the word for cartoon, I guess, in Estonian means the same thing as film. I think that's what happened, because it's... Oh, how to write a cartoon. It's wow. like Kim if... It's like something film ski or something, but it's it tr- like translates into English as like a cartoon, and I'm like, okay. Or Google just... Google th- translate. Through, through a loop. Google translate through me for All a, right. a quite hilarious loop. Huh. So it looks like you won by the narrowest of victories. Congratulations. Yes. Well, you won don't... you won uh two to one. Yeah, don't congratulate me too much. I only got two out of the five you gave me. That's yes. pretty bad. <laughs> so we both did pretty terrible. So here here. That was clapping, followed by a laser sound, and now we're moving on to game number two. It's called Crossover Franchise Extravaganza. The game is simple. It's very similar to what movie is this, but instead of choosing random actors and directors, we choose two franchises, because sometimes franchises don't belong together. But people try and make them go together anyway, so why not give it a try? So Robert will go first. He will choose two franchises, one from the blockbuster hat and one from the wildcard hat. Let's give it a shot. What do you got? I pulled... Die Hard and Toxic Avenger. Okay, so I'm some fat cat executive. Pitch me your movie. All right, so this is a sequel to Die Hard Five, right? Die, uh, uh, what was it called? Die Hard. A good day to die. A good die day hard. to die hard. Something. Oh, so this is going to be called Dying, Dying Hard and Dirty. Dying Hard and Dirty, <laughs> starring the Toxic Avenger and John McClane. They team up. Okay, so Hans Gruber's dad is pissed off. So you remember how in Die Hard with a Vengeance it was Hans Gruber's brother, Simon Gruber? Yeah. Okay, so now dad's mad. Oh, okay. he's like, you killed both of my boys. Yes. Okay. And John McClane's like, okay, I'm going up against not just, you know, this isn't like the other brother of Simon and Hans Gruber. This is the guy who, who gave them life. I need some help. Okay. okay. So, so why does he go to the Toxic Avenger? Because he exists in this world. Okay. Somehow. Now. Is, is it because they're... Uh, the, okay. What the if... The shitty smelliness of the Toxic Avenger allows him to transport through space-time. That 
doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> well, he just he 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 just fa- okay. he phase shifts into <laughs> into. You know, I'm I'm gonna help you out, you know, because I'm gonna give you yes. notes. Okay, that's what we executives do. Yes, okay? yes. What if the bad guys were poisoning like? the the forest water like the river in the forest or some shit where like Toxy lives okay so he's all pissed off and then it's because the bad like Hans Gruber's dad is doing this and he's just an old man he's just like fuck the environment he's just like <laughs> dumping out vats of green goo as Play- a, as his only natural Toxic Avenger movies played by Werner Herzog okay <laughs> You know, yeah, okay, so you're packaging the movie. Good. Yes. Got Bruce Willis and Werner Herzog involved. Yes. Okay. We get some Kaufman going. All right. Ka- Kaufman's directing? Kaufman directing, yes. Well, he, he'd probably direct a better movie than the last one, so It that probably makes would sense. be a better Die Hard than A Good Day to Die Hard. Die Hard. Okay. I'm okay with this. I mean, I, I like the pairing. You know, they're very plucky individuals, the Toxie and, and, and John McClane. So they have to band together, both uh, fighting for their own causes you know, Toxie fighting uh, on the basis of the environment. But how do they meet up, man? Well, because ba- Bruce Willis is there trying f- trying to go after uh, uh, Pappy Gruber. And Toxie so- shows up because the environment's getting fucked with, you know? Okay, so th- this uh, doesn't make any sense, but... That's okay. Yeah, that, that it seems It makes like- more sense than five. Yeah, you know what? It sounds like... Uh, yeah, th- this sounds like just about as good as the last one, which is not saying much. Yes, so they All cross right. each other's paths, and they, they they settle each other's scores Okay, through friendship. And are we going to market this with the use of uh, green slime? Oh, yeah. We'll like, have green slime ketchup, like they did back when Shrek came out, and we'll okay. have green slime... Like, we'll get, like, jello in on it. It'll be great. All right, let's just make sure... Nickelodeon doesn't catch wind of this. No, they've already abandoned slime. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure they're 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 past. Oh, so they're so, of... so they've uh, signed away the rights to slime. Yes, they've okay. they've uh, they've moved out of slime town, if you will. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it's a movie. All right, my picks are in. I got for the wild card, High School Musical. For the regular action, etc. franchise, I got Rocky. Okay, sounds like you got yourself a project. Okay, so Rocky. Uh, this play, th- I guess this will take place after Creed 2. Okay. So, Creed beats Drago's <clears throat> son, because I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Yeah. But he kills him in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Rightfully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> justice is served. <laughs> okay, so, it's justice is served, but uh, Yvonne Drago... Uh, He's like, he finally sees the errors in his way. After his son is murdered in the ring. Yeah, he's like, well, I guess that's an eye for an eye. But then Rocky's like, well, what the fuck am I going to do now? Yeah. Hey, man, I can't fight no more. What am I supposed to do? I'm fighting cancer. Yeah, he's just like, fuck it. I, I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, he's walking home, and he hears snapping behind him. And he looks back, and he's like, what the fuck is that? And then Nothing. He walks again, snapping. And the third time, he's like, ah, I caught you. And it's just these kids. And it's the high school musical kids. And then they're like, sup, man? <laughs> and then basically, uh, it's uh, the, the trailer would uh, go something like this. He was the toughest man in the ring. But sometimes the hardest fight is outside the ring. <laughs> and it's like, this summer, he's going to learn the, pa- the, the magic of friendship and song and dance so then Zac Efron and all of them basically help him pick up the pieces of his life you know you know you know those shitty dramas yeah yeah and and, and Rocky's gonna be all like uh, I'm, I'm supposed to sing and dance but I can't even fight <laughs> <laughs> so then they're like I don't know they just do a bunch of shitty songs about like boxing and stuff Okay. The, oh, and the ending is Zach Efron's character and him are like doing a, a pantomime of a fight, like choreography style, but then he just cracks him for real and, and he uh he uh he kills Zach Efron. <laughs> so yeah, I I gave away the ending, but it's about Does he do it Rocky on- picking up the pieces? Oh, but then Ivan Drago, he's like he just his fiery passion to to uh you know compete. He's like, okay, you know what? Maybe I see the the way the the wrong I did, but 
I'm not going to let this asshole out sing me. Yeah, so they have a sing-off. Yeah, so it's that. And then he punches Zac Efron, and and does he kill him? Yeah, he kills him. Okay, is he upset about this? Uh, the What is Zac Efron's like, character's name? Troy Bolton. Okay, so he kills Troy Bolton. Yes. Is he but upset? But it turns out that Troy Bolton was not dead. He's just a method actor and took this oh. weird drug to stop his heart. Okay. And then Rocky cries on stage because he didn't mean to kill him. Okay. And then it's like, at the end, he like he like taps on the shoulder. He's like, you finally learned how to like express <laughs> yourself, man. You oh, did man. it. I thought he actually killed him, and I thought Rocky was going to get all mad at himself and then challenge himself to a fight. <laughs> You know what? I like your idea. Let's add that. So so he starts punching himself, but the music's like, <laughs> the, the music's like really intense, but it's like duh, 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 uh, uh, it's the music it's, like, it's the music from the cat fight scene from, from Russia with Love. The, yes. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. But but imagine <laughs> He's just he's just beating the shit out of himself. Okay. Alright, so it's a movie? It's a movie. Alright. All right, so I drew my two. Uh, from the regular bu- blockbuster hat, I chose RoboCop. Okay. And from the wild card bin, I chose Spy Kids. Okay. So, fade in. The Cortezes are going to Detroit. Okay. Cortezes? Oh, the... The kids, the, the family. Yeah. Going to, to Detroit to just, you know... What year is it? Uh, present... No, wait, no. When when does RoboCop take place? Oh, shit. I have no idea. 20 years after Robo, the last RoboCop movie. Not, so, not so the remake. So these kids are like 40 now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's so it's going to be called Spy People. This is the... This spy is the, People. S- spy, spy, spy People. Cause so Spy Kids 5. Which What are they on? This would be 5. This would be f- Spy Kids 5, Spy People. Spy Kids 5, Spy People. In Detroit. In Detroit. With Robo, with Robo, <laughs> is that the, that's the title? It is a title. Okay, that's going to be a little tough to market overseas, but you know, hey, they can come up with their own title. You know, that's as, right. As, as, as we as, as we saw, as we've learned, yeah. they are no slouch when it comes to thinking of crafty titles. Okay, so Spy Kids Five, Spy People in Detroit with RoboCop. Yes, the movie, the movie. Okay, we can add that too for clarity. Okay, so they're going to Detroit and for vacation, of course, mm-hmm. for because why not? But shit gets real when they when they are uh, uh, they walk in on a gunfight between RoboCop and some ruffians, um, and you know like the Toxic Avenger Die Hard movie, they get wrapped up in each other's shit, and they realize that RoboCop needs some help. He's not the machine he once was. He's getting old. He's Peter Weller at this point, so he's still pretty old. He's like seventy. Okay. So they decide to help him out, but RoboCop teaches them some things too that. Like, they are. Like, they aren't spy kids anymore. They have to become spy people. <laughs> <laughs> Teaches them how to shoot suspects in the dick. Yeah, he. Te- this is. This isn't about knocking people out or making them slip on jelly or anything. <laughs> this is about murder now. This is murder. okay. So he's just like you kids. You're too soft. <laughs> you kids have to, to be- kill people now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they 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 do the whole dead or alive. You're coming with me bit. Uh, and machete actually makes a cameo of course because and he's just like i bet this is what i've been trying to tell you kids yeah this is what i tried this is what i've been trying to do for the past two movies it's just like tell them they need to kill more yeah machete sounds suspiciously like tony montana in this one okay um as you just heard this sounds like a i don't know man we're <laughs> this, this one's gonna take some work I'm, I'm not i'm not feeling this okay i really thought i had you with the uh with uh with detroit but i was what wrong. are they okay how about this they finally i'll help you out here yes they finally have built the district okay you know yeah it takes them 50 years in the future but they've finally done it but it's all made of like like styrofoam Okay. Like, it was really densely packed styrofoam, so it lasted for a while, but then it just crumbles. Because acid rain. Yes, Mm because acid rain, and I guess RoboCop and the Spy Kids learn that you can't uh, get mad at rain. No. (laughs) You can't be a kid. You gotta be an adult and and just deal with the rain like a a spy person. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so it's... It's a coming of age story about turning forty five. <laughs> wow, th- this is you know coming of middle age. You know, I think this is what people want though when they see a RoboCop film. Yeah, Th- they don't want 
mindless killing or science fiction what ifs they want they want coming of age characters really and machete and machete but does machete come of age i think machete finds a little bit of a child in himself <laughs> i don't know <laughs> gotta have the <laughs> gotta have some uh, something for you can't, gotta get a, make it a four quadrant film you know we want to make okay. we want to make sure kids <laughs> we want to make sure kids adults and men and women can have fun in this movie you know so okay. there you go machete Sound- learns machete learns a softer side of things okay sounds like we've got a movie all right my picks are from the wild card i got pitch perfect nice and now we got uh, it matched up with Terminator. Now the way I see it is uh, Terminator goes back in time again because mm-hmm. heaven for, forbid we move Terminator forward. We just have to keep having him go back in time. Yeah, because no one wants to see that final battle. Okay, that wouldn't be cool at all. We should just basically ruin <laughs> the the good movies. Yeah. Okay. So he goes back in time, but he doesn't hit the right date. So he hits, like, right after Pitch Perfect 3, and they're all, like, what happens at the end of 3? I've never seen any of them. I think they sing. Yeah, they sing. (laughs) They win the competition. It's like, oh, I love you guys. Yeah, Or whatever. So they're all saying their tearful goodbyes to each other, and the Terminator is like, quit your weeping. I I don't know why he sounds like that, but, okay, that's how he sounds in this one. Quit your weeping. And they're like, we've got a job to do. And she's like, why me? And it's like, because John Connor in the future, uh, he he's kind of he's kind of a tramp. He sleeps around. <laughs> and you're one of the descendants of John Connor. So, yeah. And it turns out, like, Skynet is not defeated. And the only way to defeat the robots, or at least the ones that are about to be made by Skynet, is to use the sound waves of of song specifically acapella yeah it has to be vocal sound waves i feel that i get that and the way to kill the robots fastest would be to sing bad pop songs okay so yeah uh i don't know you have any notes i think as long as we can recast treasured characters from the terminator franchise i'm okay with it you know We've, okay. re- we've recast john connor like three or four times we can get another fifth one in there sure maybe Ooh. tom green yeah I like Tom Green. <laughs> Tom Green, okay. Yeah, th- this this idea is going nowhere. This this is is this a movie? I'm not I'm, I'm not sure. It's a movie I'd see. Okay, we got Tom Green. We we got we got a what else we got? You got Tom Green, you got Anna Kendrick, you got Arnie. Hmm. That's true. Let's three uh, Here, I got uh, I got a Rebel I, Wilson will be Rebel Wilson will be Rebel Wilson. Uh, uh, oh, plot twist? You know, don't tell people this for now, mm-hmm. but let's let's see if we can work it in the script that uh, Rebel Wilson's character is actually a Terminator. Okay, I like that. But she's a good Terminator, just like Arnie. Okay, I like that. I, I can and see the trailer they, now. They fall madly in love. I like that. I okay. like that. I can hear the trailer now. The trailer starts out, and it's an acapella version of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm okay with this. I can see the trailer. I can see the poster. <laughs> we get the whole album. Oh, the whole soundtrack is pentatonics, basically. That's fine. All right, we've got a movie. So that concludes uh, the game where we just come up with terrible crossover movies. All four of those are terrible, so we're both rewarded uh, zero points. That was clapping, followed by another laser sound. And yeah, that uh, concludes this sixth episode of this podcast. I know this particular episode's a couple days late, but uh, we'll be back on track with a regular Friday schedule for episode seven. And if you like this podcast, feel free to give us a like or shout out on our Facebook, SoundCloud, or YouTube pages. Thanks for listening. And next week, stay tuned for segments such as more reviews and a segment called Public Shaming, where we give each other shit for movies we haven't seen. 